DCM in Dogs and Diet. This is a 2024 update. We're having a brand new webinar on DCM and dog food and you're invited. Is DCM still a concern for dogs? Well, yes and no. What are the best foods I should be feeding my dog now? And most importantly, what you should be giving your dog and what you should never feed your dog. I'm gonna be covering the most important diseases linked to diet, plus showing you my top natural remedies. The webinar is happening Tuesday, May 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. The FDA, they first warned pet owners in 2018 about this potentially serious type of heart disease called DCM and it's linked to diet. DCM, it stands for dilated cardiomyopathy. This would be an example of a normal looking heart muscle wall. This side here with this normal heart muscle wall, it's more than strong enough to pump the blood throughout the body. But in DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, the heart muscle wall, it gets very thin. The heart becomes expanded or dilated, hence the name dilated cardiomyopathy. And in this case, the heart, it just can't pump effectively. It's not able to effectively pump the blood throughout the body to get it to the lungs, to get it to the rest of the organs. Unfortunately, it's a really difficult disease to treat. And these dogs, the clinical signs, classic signs of a dog with heart disease, coughing, weakness, fainting, lethargy. The FDA, they last reported on this condition at the end of 2022. At that time, they reported 1,400 cases. But does that mean it's gone away and it's no longer a concern? Some veterinary cardiologists are still saying they're seeing cases as much as one a week. There is a big difference between diet-induced DCM and DCM we would see genetically in certain breeds. So breeds such as Adobes, Great Danes, Boxer Spaniels, those have a clear genetic correlation and those are the breeds that typically I would have seen in practice with a dog being diagnosed with DCM. But diet-induced is really different. In this condition, we were seeing DCM in breeds where they'd never really been ever diagnosed before. And the most common breed, it was the Golden Retriever. There was a ton of research done. You know, the FDA made the clear link. Oh, it's definitely these grain-free dog foods. But no one was able to get to a clear, definitive underlying cause. Many dogs with diet-induced DCM, they responded to this amino acid taurine. Taurine is an amino acid, part of the building blocks of the heart. And if a dog is deficient in taurine, they're not going to have this thick, normal heart muscle. They're going to have this thin, potentially dilated one. Unfortunately, taurine supplementation is not working on every dog, but still as yet, they've yet to figure out like exactly what is the underlying cause. One interesting study that I've never shared before, it was done at the University of Saskatchewan. They were feeding beagles three different diets for 28 days. One group was fed a standard grain-based diet for 28 days. A second group, they were fed a diet high in lentils. The third group, they were fed a diet high in peas, pea protein. After 28 days, the dogs that were fed the high P diet, they had specific changes in their heart, representative of a DCM. That really seems to implicate the peas, but they don't know what exactly is in the peas that can then lead to DCM. But then you have to look at the fact that there is lots of dogs, millions of dogs eating grain-free dog food, and guess what? They're not developing this, they're not developing DCM. So yes, it's confusing, and because of that, we're having an updated webinar. DCM and dog food, everything you need to know now. What dog foods and dog food ingredients to feed, what ingredients to avoid. And as an aside, I really don't recommend this one. I'm gonna be giving you my new updated and revised dog food list. Plus, we're gonna be covering the most important diseases linked to diet, and I'll be showing you my top natural remedies. The webinar is happening Tuesday, May 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. And thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.